Welcome to the channel, my name is Rob McFarlane and every week I take the biggest film and TV series and explore just how the most talented filmmakers in the world make our favourite shows. Today we're going to take a look at Zack Schneider's latest movie, Army of the Dead, and how he's used music to tell us that he hates Las Vegas. often the music that we hear in the background of our favourite TV shows and movies is composed. That means it's been specifically made for that exact moment in that exact movie. However, there are some directors out there, such as Edgar Wright and Quentin Tarantino, that are very well known for using what's termed as found music, which would be that they go and they look at music that has already been created and been released by artists big and small, and then they use that music to help evoke different feelings in their movies. This adds many emotional layers to the film, essentially for free. One of the most famous ironic scenes like this is Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. We know something awful is about to happen through the ironic use of a very happy piece of music in a incredibly tense and dramatic moment on screen. So how has Zack Schneider used music to help tell the story of Army of the Dead? In a movie about zombies, it's quite easy for us to lose sight of Patient Zero. So in the beginning of the movie, when we see Patient Zero or Zombie Zero escape into Las Vegas, we're given a beautiful track in the background where he states, And I'm just the devil with love to spare, so yes, the devil lives in Las Vegas. Obviously, this track was meant to say something else about greed, but in this case, he's saying quite literally that this zombie is going to be our big bad boss that we're going to meet again at the end of the film. By utilizing that music, he's essentially saying that this zombie is greed and hedonism manifest and it's already living in Las Vegas. Even if there were 40 more, I wouldn't sleep a minute away. So at the beginning of the movie, our lead character has pulled his team together and they're preparing for their journey into Las Vegas, their journey towards imminent doom. Quite often the characters reference that they will most likely die in this mission towards their goal of hopefully getting lots and lots of money. We could die. Yeah, we'll probably die. Mm -hmm. So when he plays Bad Moon Rising in the background of their prep scene, he is again foreshadowing the imminent doom. As it's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise. Not one to shy away from foreshadowing the end of the movie yet again. Zack Schneider uses This Is The End. Not only is there zombies in the direction that they're headed, that everyone else is headed away from, there will also be a nuclear bomb hitting that same space within a day. And of course, Zack Schneider has found a way of making sure that that nuclear bomb is an imminent threat to our characters, even though they are assured at the beginning that it won't be. I mean, obviously, you know, when you set up something as big as a nuclear bomb, you have to make that the ticking time bomb in your story. The administration has made the dramatic choice to not postpone the bombing, but rather to move it up by a full 24 hours. <sighs> so we get to the middle of the film. The heroes have surmounted a certain number of challenges, but they've been consistently moving forward. The power turns on in the casino that is their target, where they're going to have the big heist. So what does he do? He gets the music to come back on in the casino as well. In a really beautiful moment, he brings on Elvis Presley nightlife. Yeah, 
on one side he's using this music to show us yet again that what these mercenaries are doing is a real gamble. It's not necessarily going to go as well as they planned. Even in the lyrics to the track, it even says you might regret it by the morning. I love this moment. Most of the team of the mercenaries have been finished off. And we see our mercenaries that are left alive are seriously on the back foot. They're making a beeline for their escape route with the helicopter and they still don't know that, well, I mean, there's a lot still to go in the movie. I mean, it's brilliant. And they find themselves in an elevator and what music should start to play? The sheer irony of this moment as he then jump cuts us to the exterior of an elevator that we think is the one that the heroes are within. And the zombie king steps out of an elevator. Well, first of all, that lets us know just how much smarter he is than every other zombie there. And then with, do you really want to hurt me in the background? It's just such a lovely moment because he obviously really does. Can I say in this movie, pretty much everyone who handles a gun are incredibly good at getting headshots. Normally you have people who just kind of spray and pray. You might get a couple. But considering you've got zombies that are running at the characters and they keep getting headshots one after the other, it's just, it's quite impressive. And of course, we have a zombie movie. It's used music, ironically, all the way through the movie. So why wouldn't you finish on the Cranberries, zombie? Now, for those of you who don't know about the history of this particular track and why it's maybe somewhat inappropriate, uh, it was written in 1993 as a response to an IRA bombing that had killed two young victims. Now, of course, this track has also been played after a nuclear bomb hits Las Vegas and obliterates all of the zombies that are left over. Now, one might hope that there's maybe a slightly deeper meaning with regards to this particular track choice, but I believe that generally it's it's mostly to do with the fact that, that she says zombie. And finally, I want to finish off this analysis with the very first track that we hear in the movie as the montage continues. And maybe Zack Schneider is saying that the greed and the inhumanity that is within Las Vegas maybe isn't all that different from a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> 